Hey everyone, with the new leaders arrived, we're going to take a look at a new, one of the new leaders, which is me. And one of my teammates, Shinmiri, actually made a pretty decent deck and we call it like the all engine, like value over time deck kind of. It's basically the idea is to get as much engines on the board and some of them will stick and get you the value you need. And this is the deck we're going to look at today. We start as always with the cards and the synergies within the deck. Then we're looking at the general game plan and how you would like to approach the mulligan. And then we're going to look at an example match. This deck guide is a bit shorter because we're currently looking into the meta snapshot and this takes a lot of time of our work, but we promise that we have the meta snapshot ready in like in a short amount of time. So stay out, for, like look out for that. And if you like what we're doing here, subscribe to my channel. And I would say, let's start. Typically I would start with the core cards of the deck, but in this case, there aren't any. Basically, all the cards work well with each other and like more or less you are happy to have all of them and there are a synergy between the cards, but that's it, there's like no core card. So I would split the cards now in two groups, let's say the damaging group and the boost group, and we go through each of them and see like where the synergies lie, because typically within the boost group there are synergies and within the damaging group, but not much in between. So Let's start with the with the damaging ones. We have the synthesis, which is not really an engine, but which is the power to deal like five times like one damage, which is pretty useful in combination with cards we, uh, we get later. We have Yenkon, and there's already like the first synergy, as, like uh, what you see here. Yenkon is an or has an order ability which deals like one damage to all the highest units. So if you have two five, let's say two fives on the board, or the enemy basically has two fives on the board, and you trigger Yenkon. Then it will hit both fives and bring it onto fours. If your enemy has five fives, you hit all three fives. So basically, the more equal cards the enemy has, the more power Yennef will get. And the good thing about Yenkon is that, for example, like if you have Sacentesis on the board, you can use Sacentesis to line up the enemies. So this is basically a lineup, and this is the executor. Then we have Octvist. Octvist damages all enemy one, which is very important in the late game. So if like there are a lot of units on the board already you can use Octavis to deal a lot of damage at once. We have Seltkirk, which is um, a card to duel an, uh, an enemy. If you use the Meath buff onto him, he will get stronger, so he has not only five, uh, five points of power, but like six, maybe maybe seven if you have... Maybe if you also have like some buff units there as well, so there's also the first energy, uh, synergy between buff units and like damaging units. If you, for example, use Yannicke, which I explain later, um, you can boost him up way more, and then like he has even more remove potential, so... Um, that's actually one of the few remove cards we have in the deck. Then there is Botchling, which basically deals one damage on uh, wait on turn end. There we go, and turn end to the highest enemy. But if you click on it, as well basically execute his order ability, he will turn to the Lavakin, and then he will boost the lowest unit of your not of the deck but of the board. So he can either be like a damaging card or a boost card, whatever you need at a certain time. Then we have oh let's quickly talk about Aulach. Aulach. Avalach is gives an, gives an ally immune, which is very important because like your units often will get removed, locked, or in the other way removed from the board, so they don't they are not able to execute the engine capabilities. By playing Avalach and giving an ally the moon, for example, like uh, immunity on Yenkon, Yenkon will stick to the board, and you can they have a guaranteed execution of the ability, which comes in very handy. Vandergrift is another card which can do one damage per turn. It's uh, you need to play it on the middle road, and typically. Vandergrift is like not, for example, not as strong as Yenkon. But since you like have so many engines, like some of them will get removed. So what I typically do is, for example, I play Vandergrift first, because if it gets locked removed, then I can play Yenkon afterwards and Yenkon will be safer. If it sticks to the board, great, still one one value per turn, so uh, it's still not a bad card. This is that it deals four damage to an enemy, which is great because let's one like if together with Selkirk, that's the only way to interact with the enemy board really, like as a removal, I mean. Um, but its order ability or vest order ability will give an ally seal, which is very important if you have something like, let's say, the synthesis plays and you need to execute it right now, or Octavist, for example. Uh, so seal can get you out of really dire situations. Then we have Ike. Oh, I like you. Actually, Ike is another removal, but only if um, you have a dragon and you can seal and then you can execute it automatically. If it doesn't have, if you don't have a dragon in hand, then it is an order ability. And since he has like a three point body often people are able to remove him before you can execute it. So either buff it with Meath to like make it more survive, or try to have Synthesis or Octopus in hand to remove the 8-point unit. 
If you don't think the enemy plays an 8-point unit, you probably want to mulligan him away. Then we have Hubert, which is another synergy with our damaging cards because it boosts him. He boosts himself for every car, uh, for every damage you dealt in this turn. So, for example, if you have an Octopist on the board and you deal like let's say eight point of damage to the whole enemy board, Hubert will be buffed by eight afterwards. If you have Sacentesis on the board, Octopist on the board, and I don't know, you can also like get a Yenkon off. Then like the, the damage you do in the round stacks, stacks, stacks which means even more power for Hubert. Um, then we have Vincent. Vincent doesn't really do damage, but it sets the power of a non-boosted enemy down to 1, which can be handy to remove it, for example, if you have Sacentesis on board, or if you also have like a Catvenny Revenant, which deals that 1 damage to a unit, but if it kills the unit, it will spawn another Revenant. So, for example, if you use Vincent to set the power of an, uh, of an enemy to 1, you can immediately execute the order ability of Catvenny Revenant, Bam, you get another Catvenny Revenant. Good thing about Catvenny Revenant is also, if you have a 1 point unit on the board, you can hit that as well and get another re uh, Revenant through that as well. Also a good target for Revenant is Sabrina. So like if your enemy has a lot of like unit row stack, or it's generally late in the game, you can play Sabrina when you have a Catvenny Revenant on the board, hit it uh, with um, the Revenant, I mean you hit Sabrina with the Revenant, she will do 2 damage to all units on the enemy row, and you get another Revenant out of it. You can also execute Sabrina with Octavist or with Sacentesis, so there's a lot of options to actually get her off, So which is a good thing. Also like Vendergrift and so on. Another damaging card is the Lyrian Abalest. This is also a card you want to play early, so it will get removed so your gold engine cards will stick to the board. And its order ability, order ability damages a unit by one, and it gets one charge whenever you play a card with orders. And we have a lot of those cards in the deck, so this will definitely see some value as well. And this is all about the damaging card. Let's go back to the top and let's go for the boost cards. Neneke. This is also not really an engine, but it boosts a unit by one. It has three charges, so basically you play Neneke and next round you can boost one unit or more units by one. You can do that three times, which is very important and very good with other cards as well. Worst case, you just use Neneke to make other engines more, like, you increase the survivability of other engines. Then we have... what? where do we have? Oh, there's... I don't know boost cards anymore up there. It doesn't seem like it. Visigota, next boost card. Every time like an enemy or you play... Well, actually both players... As if both players play a card, he gets a charge. Not when both players play a charge. Every time a player plays a card, he gets a charge. And he can use his charges when he's on the ranged row to boost a unit like by one. So if, for example he has seven charges then he can boost seven units by one or he can boost one unit by seven times or anything in between. So he is also very good to increase the survivability of other cards of other engines but he also works well with other boost cards like Anna Stranger. She's probably one of the strongest engines in the deck because every time on your turn on turn end she boosts adjacent units by one if she's boosted. So you can use Neneke, you can use Gota to buff her up, you can use Meef to buff her up and then she will boost both units on uh, both sides basically by one, which is two points per turn, and which can be increased by other cards even more, for example. And this is probably like one of the interesting cards. Treat them infantry, whenever this unit receives a boost, damage a random enemy by one. So basically, you boost her, um, treat them infantry with Meef, you get another point because this will damage a random unit. And now imagine you play two in, uh, Tridom infantries next to your Anastranger. That basically means four points per turn if it will stick. And since it's on your turn end, you can always use your other cards to boost Anastranger before the turn ends again, so you have it consistently. So this is why Anastranger is a really, really good engine card, especially in combination with Freedom Infantry. Then we have Prince Willem, which plays a random gold card from your deck. And that is mainly used, like, because all of our golds are really good cards to have. Prince Willem nearly never goes wrong. What you need to be aware is, like, if you, for example, have uh, Hubert in your deck and you haven't executed a lot of damage before, or if you have Sabrina in the deck and Sabrina is not a good card to have at the moment, then you may want to wait with Willem. Um, but on the other hand, like, all of these other cards are typically a good fit. So, probably one of the best decks to play Prince Willem. Then we have, um, well, there we go, uh, Lyrian Cavalry. Lyrian Cavalry is like a small engine card which you always want to play first. Because if the enemy removes that, well, the other engines will stick to the board more likely, which is cool. And every time you play unit with orders, it boosts self by one, so nearly all of our cards have orders ability, so it will 
be kind of like one point per turn all the time. And Lyrian Scytheman is our filler card, which you typically want to mulligan away. And every like if you play it, it's a deploy effect. It will boost by one for each boosted ally. Since we have a lot of ways to boost allies, as just said, with, like starting with me and the other cards, this will be able to get a lot of value as well. But all of the other cards typically get more value than him. So, as I said, he's just a filler card. Let's quickly talk about the gameplay plan and the mulligan. When I play this deck, I typically think of, like, I have two types of cards, damaging cards and boost cards. And if I have a lot of boost cards in round one, then I want to focus my round one on boost cards. If I have a lot of damaging cards in my hand in round one, then I want to focus on damaging cards, because there's a lot of synergy, for example, you can use your damaging um, cards to further support Yencon. Just as an example. Um, but as I said, a lot of synergies within each type of cards, so focus on one. What you also want to do in round one is you want to be sure that you have some of the bronze engines because that's your bait. You play them as a bait, they get killed, and you have like then a lot of time to use your other gold engines as well. In round three, it's okay to have like a lot of gold engines uh, as well because that's where you need the power, right? But in round one, it is typically a good thing to have the options to remove some bronze cats or we'll stick with them in round three. Also, like if, for example, focus on damaging options, then you probably want to get rid of infantry. You probably don't want to play a Scytheman. On the other hand, you actually never want to play Scytheman. You want to get mulligan it most of the time as well. But in a boost scenario, you may want to keep it because for me and for other boosting cards, you may be able to get a good uh, Scytheman off. Strategy-wise, play long runs. Well, that's probably like the, the only really tip you need try to play two long rounds and it means you need to win round one. That so that way establish your engine early because if you lose round one and the enemy is smart he will push you in round two and that means you don't get the tempo you need to set up your engines. You need the security that you have time to develop your combos to synergy so they get like a lot of value over time. In short round two that's almost never possible. The second thing is if you're able to like set up your engines in round two then enemy will try to play a long run too, so you kind of like have a short run free while they can overtake you, because as again, your engines won't find a lot of value. In case that happens, try to get cards which don't rely too much on time, like the Synthesis or Neneke. They will have, they have really high power, and they can actually get the whole power in the next turn. So in the short run, try to focus on them, and otherwise than that, try to get a long run out of it. One thing about Avalach, you can use Avalach as a bait as well to um, get logs and removal on Avalach so you can play other cards and um, the same as I said with the bronzes. Keep careful, like be careful about Willem. Uh, always think of what you have in the deck and if there's something which you don't need and how high the ch chances are. This is especially true with Sabrina and... where is he? Um, well, Winston is okay. Hubert, if you don't have a lot of damage dealt, um, so in case you need to risk it, be sure you have a setup for those. And then I would say let's go into some gameplay matches and see how this deck actually plays out. Me versus Deathwish. Why should I help you? Why should I help you? You don't need to help me, you can just like lose and I'm fine. Um you can kill it with like I mean the uh, immediate like rod finger stuff, but you can keep basically kind of with everything. I don't think we need drama per se. We don't need two of those. And that's it. It doesn't really fit into the picks though. <laughs> oh well. Let's see what it starts with. What do we start with actually? Okay, I see. Hey, thanks for the follow MB Cur 38. Thank you very much. Um, well, there are no targets. We basically need something to be something boosty, so to say. Which means we probably could go for calorie and try to save it, or we get a Neneke and save that because that one dies easily. Nasty wounds there you go. That you'll live. So that won't die through some rod finching against it. So if he plays Manticore, you can like easily kill it though. So. Be gone. Oh, well, I don't care. Well, it locks Nanicate and Mario units. Now, Rodfin doesn't have a good target anymore. He can Cyclops, but then, like, the Calibri is not the best target. He'll actually lose value. So, I'm fine with this. 
This and this is a pretty good combination. Seize an enemy free or less power. Oh, there we go. So we don't want to play stuff with less free power, I guess. Otherwise, I can really go get it immediately. How to play around this man? Can't go for Jennifer, but. Mm. I would just go for Vincent and then kill it, but then like, ah, oh, this is hard. This is seal. Since we're really such a bad thing, what if you pass and just go for a real long round? Do you think he will push this one too? He could. Oh god, you know what? <laughs> In the age of like mulligans, like why do we care? Why do we care? Now we just need to be ahead. And if out Maruna, like which is the biggest threat here actually, because like we've only freeze. Why not pass? I don't see a reason. I I don't know, maybe. Sabrina. What's well, actually well in this round Sabrina is actually not a good idea. Well, if, if Sentence survives, actually this. So let's let's keep this. Let's see if it wants to push. Good. So let's see if we create the same was for free. Okay, so we can go for Revenant immediately. Or are we trying some other shenanigans? We could set up something. We could set up something. We could go for Treat of Infantry right away. But I think we're going for Revenant. We boost it. If he plays like a Rod Finger, he can kill it immediately. And we, actually, we wouldn't have need to boost. But if he plays Wild Hunt, which he doesn't, then he would have killed it anyway. Now he can't anymore because of the Wild Hunt. Griffin, sure. Go for some time, my friend. But there we go. Now we can actually play this, and this is pretty good. Look at this. Gotta go. <sighs> I'm sorry for your question, my friend. But the value is mine. Now we need to go for some other cards. We can go for Yen, maybe. And then we focus on boosting in the last round again. Yen or Bandagriff? Depends what he's playing, I guess. Okay, there will be a lot of fives. So Yan will be amazing. Yield now. And let's protect her a bit. The next round we can hopefully kill him more fives. Then we think of Sabrina into Katveni. And we can get rid of the Harpy Egg and then. Oh, professional. I forgot about that. Huh. That is problematic. <laughs> so since we... Well, we don't really have anything to... which goes for real tempo, so he can't just pass here. He could go Sabrina. That's actually okay. And we just get another Harpy out there. But hey. We still get another one, so... Type-wise, we are still fine, but everything now will be problematic. Oh, actually, Sabrina killed, uh, died for two. Uh, okay, I thought it actually hits for free, but it only hits for two, so we don't even get a harp yet. So that's good. And we even get more targets for revenants. I like that. Okay, so now we are tempo-wise, we have like an opening, so to say. So we can go for. Another engine. What has that witch done? And we're going to protect Wandergrift. I guess so. So we're like now we have like a bit of a safe zone again, which is good. I mean he can pass it any time there. Mm -hmm. 
Should have protected this turn, but on it, then he would have used something else. Still. Uh, what do we play here? I think we go for Selkirk. If he has another, like, um, that lets will still work. I kind of think of killing Darkest Boy. Oh, we should have, we should have done Selkirk before, otherwise, like, the duel would have been problematic. But hey. That was luck there. We should do the kids. Like, don't do that at home. Always play Sidekick first. Oh, we still need to play something. So, I guess we're going for. Sentences. And we don't have a. a, 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 a something like for Ike. Let's go Tree on here. Still have Visigo to hopefully next round. I'm too old for this shit. So we still need to play something now. This is what we want to keep, so we're going to get rid of Ike, I guess. We do you think he plays Spear Tip and stuff? The unworthy shall be punished. I guess he's passing now. The dragon is still like big temple for our shortman free, so that's what we need to look at. I don't know about like him. There's already a so we're going to. About He's passing. That's that's for sure. That was pretty good for me. And now we just hope that he doesn't play something where we actually need to use the water ability because we can't anymore. If he plays something big, we could just Ike, but he passes as expected, and we have like. A good card for him free because it offers some value, but we can't get like the full engines going. That's the problem if you pass from him. So Avalar will be pretty useful, Death will be pretty useful. The question is, we want to have something else instead of you. Uh, well, it's fine, I guess, if we get maybe to five, if we won't die immediately. That doesn't help. The thing is, we should probably start with this. Should have kept that, I think. Oh, but we'll be boosting Avala. Now, if he has Manticore stuff, he can get rid of Avala. And yeah, like, Rodfield won't kill. He wouldn't have killed Avala as well, but if he would have had Manticore, then we'd have a problem. Now, I can't trigger it immediately, so we go for Avala. Mm. We're looking, we're waiting for a best, best target. That's what we're going to protect, though. Does it protect best? Well, it's not perfect. But we're going to get this up now. But otherwise, it's still fine. And if it has, like. If it still goes through, we're fine. Good. See who goes through. Question is just like, what do we do about the death wish? We don't want to trigger it if he has like the stuff. Well, it will be triggered anyway. So I guess we just protect this one. If it hits this, it's actually good for us. And then we pray. Let's see. Uh -huh. It was not the best match though, but it was okay. Yeah, that's what I meant. Like, if we, it's eight value basically, so good for us. Nice. <laughs> Adeshi is full of joy. Big thanks to all my patrons who support me and make this possible, but also thanks to all of you who watched this video. Check out my Patreon link in my video description to learn about what you can get for supporting me as well, like gifted Twitch subs, postcards, and way more. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more in-depth quent guides and see you in-game.